Hi everyone, I think this might be week 28 of my know by year, and this is the video following my discussion of the pros and cons of brand loyalty, because there are several brands that I would say that I do have brand loyalty for. In this video, this particular video, I did think it would possibly be useful to do an unsponsored review of my pull-in bag collection. I probably should have put that in the beginning of my video where I do realize that this show of stuff is a little bit antithetical, antithetical to my goals here as a no-buy channel. So maybe I'm being inserted into the beginning of this video. I realize that my focus on stuff in this video is a little antithetical to my goals as a no-buy channel, but there you have it. <laughs> this is one of the last, if not the last times I'm gonna focus on stuff on this channel and the service of doing a completely unsponsored no PR pull in review I thought might be valuable enough to justify it and to also examine the elements required to do a non-sponsored legitimate review and this is because there are so many sponsored reviews of these bags of this brand or if they're not directly sponsored they've been sent the bag for free as PR and we can assume that if somebody receives the bag for free they're probably not going to disclose the negative things about what they receive. So I am now giving my disclaimer that you're going to be seeing stuff in this video, specifically my purse collection, my entire collection of Polens, as well as other bags that I own that are not this brand that I purchased before developing this brand loyalty. I'm going to try to make this video the most opposite of sponsored that I can. First of all, obviously everything in here was purchased with my own money and I'm going to be trying to consciously cover the details that never get covered if a review is sponsored or if a review is otherwise trying to get you to buy the product that's featured. Now, it goes without saying that I bought all of these with my own money and therefore have kind of endorsed these purses in a way, right? I still have them, I still use them, they're still my kind of go-to bag. So take that as you will, but what I'm going to share with you in this video is all of the reasons why they might not be right for you. Because really that's the most valuable thing to know as a possible consumer of a product. Now if you don't want to see stuff now is your time to click away from this video. You can watch the one that I posted before this about the pros and cons of brand loyalty, where the actual products are not featured. Along with purchasing all of these with my own money, you know that my process of acquisition was pure in a way, right? I didn't receive any preferential treatment. I didn't get that free little card holder that they often send when they send influencers a free purse or free jewelry. I also did compare the value of these specific bags with what I have already experienced. So the other brands that I've bought from before, these include like Kate Spade, Coach Michael Kors, and I have a couple of more designer experiences with my Mulberry Alexa. And then my mom brought me a bag from Dior. I would never buy a designer bag of this caliber, and I might get back into reasons why for that in my discussion of value, my perceived value of this brand, but I do have experience with one like ultra luxury designer bag. So we will be comparing to that. To summarize my introduction here, I'm making this video to try to combat all of the PR and sponsored videos of this particular brand. And I guess our thinking and our perception of those kinds of reviews in general. So these are the things that reviews should tell us. Reviews are almost kind of de-influencing <laughs> videos, right? Because they should be telling us all the reasons we might not want to buy this, or we might have to think twice before we buy this, or we might have to verify that the cons of the product, the downsides, are still worth what we might perceive as the upsides, the reasons we want to buy them. So with that, I'm going to get into it and take down some of these bags to show you, go through the pros and cons. So if I haven't mentioned it already, my favorite purse brand is Pollen, and I have 12 of them. 14 if you count the micro bags. I'm gonna start with the most recently purchased ones, which are these two tote bags. They're the Sim. I think they were originally maybe the number 12 when they first came out, but now they're called the Sim, and they've been so heavily featured on all social medias. They're kind of the trendy bag of last fall, I think, and they may or may not still be trendy. I'm just not on social medias to see anymore. I have the large size, the full size in black, and the mini in cognac brown. I have some issues with these bags, and all in all, I still use them, right? This black one has been my everyday bag for the last few months that I've had work. 
and it fits standard size laptop, standard size music, and papers and all that has a good capacity. They both have a pouch that's detachable, removable, so if you're just popping out with your essentials, you can take that. But both of these bags are, other than the pouch, essentially just one open compartment. There are no pockets, no flaps or anything on the sides. So I do have a separately purchased purse organizer in both of these bags. And the organizers were actually pretty expensive because they're custom made to fit these bags. And now I've just messed it up because the flaps of the organizer have to align perfectly with the corners of the leather. So there's your first downside. And then the button clasp here does not actually close if I have music in there. So I can't close the bag with the standard size paper or imagining having a laptop or tablet. You're probably not going to be able to close it. The straps are not removable or adjustable. So if you are holding it as a shoulder bag, you've got these little ones, or if you're holding it by the little ones, you've got these flapping around. This bag boasts two different shapes, fold it in and fold it out. Now, if you like it in this folded out state, too bad, because it's probably not gonna stay like that. Depending on how much stuff you have, right here it is folded out. I'm gonna pick it up and move around a little bit. And okay, it's not doing it right now, but usually in practical use, oftentimes the buttons just undo and you're left with this again. So if you like that folded out shape, maybe it's not the bag for you because it's not gonna stay like that in all likelihood. The small one does not fit a standard size paper in it. You're not getting a laptop in there. You can even just see the corners of the paper are not aligning with the corners of the bag. And it's also not a closed bag. So like I have an organizer in there again that I bought separately. Same issue with the button. If you have stuff up to a certain level, it's not gonna close. So you're just left with this open bag. And then same issue with the handles. You can't remove them. This one might be even worse as you put your arm through here, you've got these in the way. So, and then same, if you like it folded out here, this one's really doesn't want to stay folded out. <laughs> if I want, want it to stay, it's just trying to pop back in like that. The final point about this one in particular, and I haven't really noticed it as much on the big black one, but this one in particular has some stitching issues, the quality issues. So you can see, I'll show you a close up. You can see that it's all kind of, there's some skips. It's not straight. It doesn't look like it's the greatest quality. And I think part of that is due to how popular these are. And there's usually a wait list, like you pre-order and they send them when they're ready. So if I spent what they're currently charging for this bag, which I think is over $400 for this mini and over 500 for this, which was not the case when I purchased them. I think this was like 360 or something and this might've been 420. But if I was looking at current prices, I would not buy either of these bags. They were not worth it, especially with the quality issues on this. And you could see it, right? The stitching really contrasts against the leather. I would not buy these at the current price. There are mod shots at the end of this video, so you can see the size comparison on me. I'm five foot 10, 178 centimeters, 1.78 meters. Okay, while we're on the brown bags, I wanna show you a comparison of the cognac brown versus the camel. And the bag that I have in camel is a micro bag. So this is the camel, this is the cognac. And we're in mostly natural lighting here. Most of the bags that I saw in this format, this, this style, were actually in this color. So the color camel was the trending color for this bag in both sizes. And I almost got it in the camel. Luckily, before I did that, I got my hands on this one on a resale app, just because I'm, again, a fan of the brand. The micro bags have almost no practical use value, but I just have the brand loyalty. So I kind of collected the, the whole weight of what I have. But anyway, um, I got this one first and realized that the camel, in my opinion, is very one dimensional. It's not rich. It's kind of, to me, it's like, doesn't have a lot of character. It doesn't look as high end as the more rich cognac color. I think this bag in the big size actually has a new color auburn, which I have no idea what that looks like, but it looks very similar to the cognac in the pictures. Another downside of this particular brand is the pictures on the website versus colors in real life often are very different. And it's really hard to tell whether you're gonna like the color in real life. Sometimes hard to tell whether it pulls warm or cool tones 
which is a huge issue. If you know you prefer warm or cool toned wardrobe colors, what are you supposed to do? Some of them, yes, are neutral enough, but colors on the website, colors in real life, I would say they don't match very well. So this is the Camel, this is the Cognac. Now this micro bag is in the style of the number nine. So let me grab my other number nine. I don't even know if I need to review the micro bags because you kind of know already, like this has no practical use value. It's just a stupid little accessory, <laughs> like almost like a necklace. So you can't really fit much. It does fit a card and your keys, but like this is not practical. This one is my most used and probably favorite pull-in bag. It's in the color chalk, which is, I would call it a gray rather than a white. It's like a very, very light gray. They don't have a pure white bag. You can kind of tell it against my shirt. Polen does not make a pure white. They also don't make a lot of bright colors. So if that's what you're looking for, this is not the brand for you. So this is the nine micro. This is the nine full size. I have a nine mini, but I can't show it to you because it's still in this box. And I actually have it in the lavender purple color, the mauve, is it? I do believe they have a wisteria lavender now, which is paler than this one. But I don't actually know what both of those look like in real life because I have not seen this because it's being saved for a future occasion. My shopping problem was so bad in the previous years that I have three unopened pollens that are being saved for future gift giving occasions. How insane is that? Anyway, so I'm not even going to unbox those for this review. Sorry. Like I said, this is not trying to get you to buy them or entice you. This is trying to provide maybe what a realistic review should look like and really kind of spotlight the reasons you might not fit well with this brand or these specific styles. The complaints I've heard about that mini size is that the opening here is too small to get in and out of. And I can see how that would be because the handle here really does get in the way of getting into this bag. So especially while you're holding it, like these parts of the leather really get in the way. I would actually say none of the Polen bags are great grab and go kind of bags where you can have them and get in and out of them really easily. You might be able to get in and out of the tote bags, but then there's no security. There's no zipper, there's no pockets, there's no flaps or anything that like hold your stuff on the inside. So <laughs> there you go. The thing with this bag as well, you can wear it cross body using this really thin shoulder strap. Like you can see how thin that strap is. And it really is not proportional to the weight of this bag. So I would say that this is not a light bag. In general, I, I don't think they're super heavy because there's not a ton of hardware on them, which I'll get to later. But the strap in proportion to the weight of this bag is just ridiculous. So this is kind of even a non-functional strap. Just hold it by the top handle or even under your arm is how I carry it. Now, that being said, the shape of this bag is what makes it my favorite and kind of makes this brand my favorite. The sculptural shapes of the leather, how they have folds, how they're kind of ideas that I had not yet seen in a purse or a handbag. So that's why I have so many of this brand and I would say it's still my favorite brand for leather purses. Hardware. This bag, again, does not have any zippers. There's just an open top. There is a zipped pocket on the inside. So there is that. Can't really show you the inside that well because I have, first of all, the handles in the way, and second of all, I have some stuff in there. It's got a button to close the top, which gives it slightly better shape. But if you have stuff in this bag and you just kind of let it sit, the weight of the bag, the stuff kind of collapses on itself. So these creases can kind of get deepened a little bit and there's no feet on this bag, speaking of the hardware. So when you set this bag down, there's no protection on the bottom. And these little corners are where the most wear has happened on this model. And I think it would apply to all of the number nines, mini, full size, micro. So I'm going to come up and show you the damage, the scuffs. You can really see how the white reveals the gray when it's scuffed up like that. And you can even see kind of like minor marks. They might wipe off, but this bag is kind of easily marked. And once again, at the current price of these, I'm not even actually sure, but I think it's over $600. I'll put it up here. I don't think this is worth it. The only way actually I would think <laughs> that the current price of these bags is worth it is if you know you love one and you were only going to buy one. 
I would never amass the collection that I have at the current prices. So now that we've covered the number nines, let's cover the number ones. I have three of the number ones, and I have actually had the original number one, which is the full size, and I have already resold that one because it just was very impractical for my needs. It's basically a large version of this, and it does fit a standard size paper in it, but because of the size of the bag and the design, there's this massive flap of, in my case it was suede, which I was afraid of damaging because it's just a delicate leather. And you put all your stuff in there, but it's a massive flap. To get into it, you have to lift that flap. You think about the creasing that happens every time you do that. And then the opening, again, is not very big. And you open it with the buttons, the design is the same on the large and the small. And you have just this little flap pocket. It's otherwise an open bag with no organization. So I guess in general, pull-in organization in their bags is not that great. And the openings of their bags is not that great. They're really form over function, right? So if you're looking for a practical bag, this is not your brand. So there's that flap pocket, the interior. It's got fabric inside of it. I have a little card holder in here. I'll get to that later. But... This is the number one nano. And then there's a little card holder size flap on here, which is kind of useless unless you want to just put one card in the back. I guess that would be practical if you just want to put your payment back there and then not open your bag. In the large version, it was just not practical for me. It was heavy and getting in and out of it was so cumbersome. I had it also in the mustard yellow, which my goal for having that was to have like a yellow option, but it was so dull that it didn't really fulfill that pop of color in my wardrobe. So I just ended up reselling that one. And in general, Polen does not do bright colors very well at all. The brightest color that I have is this red. And it's very much like a classic ruby. It's not a bright crimson red. And that's fine if that's what you're looking for. It's kind of a berry toned. In general, Polen doesn't do styles that easily align with like a sportier style or a casual style. They're kind of a little elevated. So if your style is more sporty, casual, relaxed, maybe this is not your brand either. Like the original number one and the Nano, it has the pocket on the back, which this one you can actually shove your phone into. So that's kind of nice. The metal hardware here and the same kind of buttons on the opening to make it so that you can fit your hand in and the same little flat pocket here. And I do have <laughs> another small leather good, the wallet which I'll set aside for later. Now, I kind of have some beef with this hardware. The gold chain is pretty inconvenient in a lot of ways. It's not adjustable, it's not removable, which there's no other way to carry it if you were to remove it. So I, I kind of understand that. But the chain is just not a comfortable strap option, in my opinion. And I didn't know that before I had this bag. I hadn't had other chain straps. But I don't feel good about wearing nice clothes with this because I feel like it's going to rub the fibers and not be good to my clothes. And the problem with that is that because of this hardware, this is kind of a less casual bag. So if I'm gonna wear this, I'm probably wearing nicer clothes that I don't wanna mess up with the chain. You see where I'm going with this? And the other thing is that the actual metal here has significant scuffs on it. And this is just everyday use. Nothing's happened to this bag, but you see these two little spots of wear and I kind of have a reason to believe that this would happen on any spots of pull-in hardware. Like any of the larger buckles or anything, I think would probably have these spots of wear show up on them as well. In fact, I'll check that out on the, these other two bags when I get there. And again, the last number one is the micro, which do I have to review this? It's exactly the same, same buttons, same closure, same little flap here that doesn't hold more than a card. In fact, I don't even know if a regular card would fit in this one, in the flap. It would fit in the bag, but not the flap. You really have to shove it in there. And there's like the tiny flap on the back. This is really just novelty value. So like if you're not already obsessed with the brand, then there's really no reason for you to have this. Let's go on to the most popular bag from this brand. So as I got that one, I got my other colored Holen as well. This is the number eight, numero huit, and the numero dis, the 10. Let's start with the 10, because this one is the other most trending Holen bag. I think it's their most popular to date. I have it in the midnight blue kind of almost what I would consider a, well, I don't know if I go so far as to call it a teal, but like, it's not really a navy. And then this is the one with the straps that you can put on the long strap to use crossbody or have the short strap so you can put it on your shoulder 
And if you extend the short strap, you can wear it crossbody as well. So it's kind of sits across your chest like so. And that is how I prefer to wear it when I'm not displaying it on the shortest setting. Although the bag boasts those multiple functions through the strap changes, you're never going to use it in a multifunctional way, chances are, because it's so inconvenient to actually change the strap. Like, you're never going to be out and about and being like, oh, I want a crossbody now, let me just grab the other strap and change it. No, because to do that, you have to do these little kind of toggles. So like, you have to get this out, which is difficult. Okay, get that out of the little belt loop hole and then move it to the next one and then push your way in. And in fact, I'm gonna go back to the other one because I'm gonna hang it up again. But you have to really slide it in, push it in to the new hole. And it might take you three to five minutes to do that. And if you're out and about and wanting to switch your bag, are you gonna sit around doing that? You're probably doing something else with your time and your day. You're gonna decide before you go out <laughs> how you wanna wear this bag. The zipper, while it is smooth enough, makes it hard to get your hand in and out without scratching yourself. Like the opening of this bag again is very narrow so that to open it, you have to like pull it open. Or if you just shove your hand in, it's not a comfortable sensation. It's a hard metal zipper. There is a flat pocket in here as well for organization, but that is it. I would also argue that this bag is very small. So I've seen other creators featuring this bag and they say, oh, it holds all your essentials. Don't worry about it. It's big enough. It looks bigger. It's, it has more room than it looks like. Granted, it does look smaller on me because I'm so tall than it does on a lot of other creators, a lot of other girls. But I would say that this is not a great size for normal everyday carry. It's a good size for like a minimal day. If you just got your wallet, keys, phone, maybe a lipstick, maybe a pack of gum or something. But as soon as you start thinking about putting some snacks in here, you know, granola bars and other packs of nuts or something, I mean, you are not getting a water bottle in here. You are not getting your umbrella in here. You are not getting a book in here. You might get a Kindle in here, but if you do that, then the capacity in general is decreased. And what happens when you've put too much in it is that you start to see the bulge of the stuff you put in against the leather, you know, like so. And then, at least to me, I feel like that's going to damage the bag, right? It's going to leave those imprints. So in my opinion, you really don't want to overfill this. You really can't put that much in it before it becomes overfilled. So unless you don't have a lot to carry, this is not, in fact, a very practical bag, despite how trendy it is. I would also caution the quality of this one because, again, it's one of their more popular designs. And I've seen a lot of complaints. In fact, is that a little scuff right there? So I see this little discoloration on my strap here. I don't think that comes off. That's like a little defect in the leather. And I've seen many complaints of visible glue, stitches not being the greatest. I've seen complaints on the number nine actually about how the symmetry of the folds is not right. And I actually never really looked at it online. I think it's okay. That being said, I did get this like two price increases ago when it was under $400, maybe back when they weren't producing so much. There have been a lot of quality issues with their bags in recent times. My oldest pull-in is actually this number eight. And I got this when it was like $280 or $290. Wow, under $300, right? And I got it in the almond green, fresh almond, and they no longer have this color available. It immediately captivated me because it was like, so ugly that it's cute <laughs> in a way. It's like got the flower shaped bottom. It does have feet. The number ones also have feet as well. I mean, this one's so small that do you really need feet? Like, are you gonna put it on the ground or are you gonna keep it on the back of your chair or on your person when you're sitting? And then this has feet. It doesn't balance on its feet though, like it tips over. So this one does not actually stand up very well. You have to balance it purposefully. And then even this little micro has feet. But I think this is just because the design itself has feet and not because you're ever going to set this down. Like if you wear this, it's just going to be on your person the whole time. Like how ridiculous would it be to set, set this on the ground? Anyway, so this has feet. It comes in a large version as well. It does have a decent capacity. In fact, I have a video reviewing this from years and years ago when I first got it 
where I unboxed it and then <laughs> my husband did an edit of putting things in and out of this bag and I had a book in there, I had a passport, I had my phone, you know, just various things. You wouldn't want to overstuff it that much every day. That was actually my first attempt at a no-buy channel for the year 2020. He did the editing and uh, it didn't work out very well. It was massive failures, very cringy. So cannot remove the strap. So if you're carrying it by the handle, it's either flapping around or you can stuff it in there and then make your stuff harder to get to because there's a big flap of leather in the way. Um, this, you can see, is actually curving because I have stored it in a way where it's been bent, I guess. So let's try to undo that because I do want to keep these nice, even if I'm trying to talk you out of buying them. I guess there's not a whole lot more to say. This is also an open bag, so there's no security if you're flinging it around and uh, no organization inside either. Ah, I do have another one of my card holders in here. I'll get to that later too. Okay, let me get these boxes out of the way. These two are Barry and the Tonka. I, when I first saw the berry bag, I thought, wow, this one is so ugly. It looks like a pair of women's underwear or a diaper, and I'm never going to get it. And I'm not ever going to get the leather version, but I did cave and get the faux shearling version. So this is the one that looks like it's sheepskin. Again, I'm sorry to be frustrating, but I'm not unboxing either of these because they're for future gift-giving occasions, so I might get this for Christmas. <laughs> I know that's ridiculous. Talk to me later about that. So that's what's in here. And I've also seen complaints about the hardware on that. So like the clasp not actually working. And then again, I think it's a bag that's also slightly too small for most people's everyday needs, dare I say. If you carry a water bottle or an umbrella or anything of that nature, a Kindle. So keep that in mind. Maybe don't buy that one for that reason. It also has no feet. You can't sit it down. It's just a crossbody bag or a top handle bag. And I don't think you can remove the strap. I could be wrong about that because I haven't opened this, but those are all the reasons you might not want to buy that one. And then in here is the Tonka, and I got this as soon as it was released for the first time. This is the color Glacier Blue, which was only in the first release, or maybe the second release, because I remember this was back in my heyday of shopping and being obsessed with things. I saw the bag first come out, and I actually left a comment on their Instagram saying, wow, I'd buy this right away if it came in baby blue. And lo and behold, it did, later in the next drop of them or whatever, come in baby blue. So I impulse bought it. It was under $400. I'm pretty sure this was $390 back in those days. And um, it has silver hardware, as far as I know. It's a light ice blue, which is kind of a core wardrobe color for me, or a very complimentary color. Still haven't opened it, so I still haven't worn it. Testimony to whether or not I truly needed it, I definitely didn't. I mean, I'm going to hopefully enjoy it when I do open it, when the occasion arises <laughs> for another gift. But the complaints I've seen about that one are that the magnet opening is kind of... I mean, people like it, people don't like it, but it's got a magnet and the flaps kind of close like this. So like to get in, I guess you, you, you would have to like open it like that. I think because it's also got a fold in it, the capacity is probably limited by that fold. And then the strap, I think now is more adjustable to be a shoulder bag or a crossbody, but this one I think is just crossbody. So we'll see. We'll see what I think of that in real life when I do actually open it. All right, now we have the number seven numero set and the Umi. I think this was the second bag that I purchased. The strap is not removable, and it's a thick strap this time, which is maybe what the number nine would have if it were proportional and not artistically minded. It might not look as harmonious on the number nine to have a strap this thick, but again, like form over function <laughs> is this brand's kind of ethos, I think. There's a little more hardware on this bag, and I guess it still looks okay. This is shiny and not brushed like the number one mini. So maybe that's why there's no scuffs on this. And then the pull ring opening. Now this bag is not convenient to get into at all. So like because there's no top opening here, you have to pull this back and then reach in. And when you're wearing it, you cannot do that one-handed. This is not a great bag to do if you are holding a baby or anything in your other hand. Because like, oh yeah, so easy, so convenient. And then to close it, you've got to perfectly line this, this up. In fact, again, I don't even know if I can do it one-handed. It's not happening, people. To close it, you have to perfectly line it up and then push it in. And then it's got like the faux suede lining here and one flap 
here, so no organization in the main compartment. The top handle is removable, although I don't know why you would ever want to remove it, because this does not look offensive to me on the back or front of the bag. So the part that is removable is the part you would actually probably never remove. I do like the subtlety of the clasps that Polen uses. So that is one of the reasons I was drawn to this brand, because I do find other brands and their clasps are kind of a turnoff for me. To me, they cheapen the look of an otherwise nice bag. In fact, I will show you a comparison. Here's the clasp on this number seven, or the lack of clasp on the strap, and then here's the clasp on the Mulberry Alexa. And to me, this is a cheap looking little toggle. And then here is the clasp on the Dior that my mom got as a hand-me-down from one of her friends. And again, what is this? Like, this is not elegant compared to this little push button thing, even though it's as inconvenient as this is, it at least looks inoffensive to me. Okay, now back to why you might not want to buy. Even though this is a black kind of everyday bag, it's got an okay capacity. Again, I would say it's a little small. Like if you want to take an umbrella and a Kindle with you, you, you probably could manage it in this because there's a square base, unlike the ones with the rounded base where it's very limiting of the space. This one might have a little bit more, and it actually does have a ring for your keys inside here. It's like the worst review ever. I haven't showed you the inside of any of these. But because it's tapered to a triangle, right? The side profile is a triangle. It does have limited space. So it's not the roomiest of bags. This one does come in a mini, which I don't even think fits a lot of the phones these days because it's smaller than this and your phone just is too wide for the mini version. So I don't even think that's a practical contender. <laughs> I don't, I've never had the mini of this despite having almost every other model. So I would say that this bag also stylistically is not that great for casual looks. So like if you like to dress in a more sporty, casual, relaxed way, I would actually argue that the only bags that kind of work with that might be this one if you wear it crossbody, kind of makes it more casual, or the one that I just sat on, the Umi. This is a little more elevated, than I would like to have for a basic black bag in all honesty. But like I say, I already have it. It was my second bag that I purchased from the brand. I thought black would be a classic color. And that is true. It's not that you're gonna go wrong with a black bag per se, but if I got the black in this one, I think it would be more stylistically versatile. However, this one I got secondhand off of Vestier Collective, I believe, for like 200 and some dollars. So well under the current retail and it was cheaper than the 390 that it was being sold for when I bought it like two years ago and this one has a lot of complaints about the zipper because it's a curved zipper but it's the same kind of style as on the Dees but it's really hard to actually zip this whole bag up again it's not a one-handed operation and then when you don't have it zipped it kind of gets this weird like puckery texture up here and again Getting your hand through those metal teeth is like getting through this cyclone and Sisyphus of <laughs> Odysseus's journey. There you go, I'm revealing my ignorance. And again, a piece of makeup that doesn't need to be in there because it's gonna expire, because I'll forget about it. Again, the one flat pocket, the faux suede lining, the lack of organization in here. It does have a lot more space than this one because of the square bottom again. So while they are the same kind of size, this one has a larger capacity. You might get your umbrella. You might get a small water bottle in here. I wouldn't put a water bottle in any bags except for the tote bag where you can have it upright because if you leak in one of these bags, it's not gonna be a good look. And they're more expensive than I would like to ruin by water damage. And this one does have an adjustable strap as well. So you can do the shoulder bag like so, or it can be lengthened into the crossbody. Again, probably not something you'll do on the go because it takes a little finagling, but it can be done. This is the color clay. Okay, so that is all of the bags. There have been, I think, three new ones that have come out, or maybe four if you count the woven bag. I have the small card holder version. There's been that bag, a bag called the Nod, which is like interlocked woven fabric that I think looks kind of old ladyish, if I'm honest. The Moki, which is the one with all the folds that I had a kind of fleeting interest in, especially in the dark brown ebony color, like the chocolate dark brown. But to me, that one looks more like a regular bag because it has the clasps, like on the other designer bags that I have, the thicker strap that is more utilitarian, but less artistic. And just the shape of the bag is more traditional. So like, I guess they're getting a little more functional <laughs> versus the form with that model. 
but that's not why I like this brand in the first place, so it's not ultimately something that attracts me so much that I would spend what they're currently charging, more to the point. The last bag I think they've released is that net bag using the leather beads made with offcuts, which I really like that idea and what it makes the brand stand for as far as using the waste and being more conscious. And I guess net bags for summer are very trendy. But again, I would not spend my own money to see what the hype is about with the new bag in that instance either. I mean, I could picture a net bag being cute, even with this outfit, like the tan net bag would probably look nice. But I've accepted that I don't need any more Polen bags. In fact, my shelves here, my three shelves, one, two, and three out of the frame, are just the right size to hold my current collection. So I don't need any more bags. And in fact, I have other non Polen bags that I guess I will get to after I show the card holders. So let me just do a quick run through these. I have the Nati card holder, which is in the dune color. It's like a nude. I thought it was going to be more pink, but it's very tan and kind of like flesh colored in my opinion. So I don't love the color. I would almost rather have the yellow, the wheat. It's opened with a button that you have to line up perfectly to close. And it's very bulky for a card holder. It's got some organization in here. You can put a card in there. You've got two pouches and it looks a little bit not elegant from the side. And for me, if I'm carrying a card holder, the reason for that is because I want it to be streamlined and fit into a bag and not take up as much space as this thing, especially smaller capacity pull ends that I tend to carry. That's why I have these two card holders. This is the Atla. This is one of the original card holders that they used to sell. This might not actually be sold anymore. I got this one off Poshmark. It's got kind of chips on the leather up here. The Atla has a zipper and large pouch for cards and stuff. And then back slots for cards. And then the nice little sewn. This was said to be made off of leather offcuts as well. Oh, lastly, I have the number seven wallet, which my husband got me for Christmas as a surprise. And what I will say about this is that if you put too many cards in it, it starts to get this crease. And I guess that's just use as well. If you open it and close it a lot, it'll get that crease. It's kind of bulky as well, which is why I got the other black one. And there's your slots. There's your pocket for coins. There's another flap. I do have the long version of this as well in the Duo Camel. And again, world's worst review video ever. I'm not going to get it and show you because it's downstairs in my everyday drop zone because I'm currently using it. But it's basically the long version of this. It comes on a belt that you can wear around the waist or across your body, which is how I wear it. Cross body like fanny pack style, but you know, the elevated pull end version of the Lululemon belt bag essentially. Um, which is kind of how I do the trends, right? I still follow all the trends, but I do it in my own sometimes more expensive way. Ah. This is the one that I use on an everyday basis, the Atla. This is the one that I kind of regret buying. <laughs> and I really also did not need this, but because I was in a little collecting phase of Polens. Now, none of these purses, I have not ever bought a thousand dollar piece of clothing or purse or anything like that, but I have lots of $300, $400 purses, right? So all in all, if I have 12 of them and you multiply that by, you know, conservatively say $300, you could probably even say 400. That's total here. In other words, a lot of money. Getting to the value judgments of this brand. Now, price increases aside. When I compare Pollen with my other experiences of like Kate Spade, Michael Kors, um, even my slow dance, Don Salant, Johnny Bucket bag over here, or like this genuine leather non-branded bag, I would say that the quality of the Pollen's is noticeably better. So like the leather is better. This is like, this almost feels like it's got a plastic coating on it and a hair on it. That's great. It's not very luxurious, even if it is also kind of artistic and structural. And this just feels like it's a cheaper quality leather straight up. That, and I would also say Kate Spade leather is kind of cheaper feeling. If you're buying Kate Spade, honestly, it might be more for the novelty than the quality. They're the brand that makes like a bag shaped like an orange or a bag shaped like a tennis racket or an alligator or something. That's a great thing to shop that brand for. But other than that, you probably don't want to buy that brand. Same with, to some extent, Michael Kors and Coach. I feel like their quality has a large range. They've got outlet stores where the quality is definitely not as good and they have higher end, higher priced options where the quality might be slightly better. So like the leather is maybe, it's definitely on par, probably slightly better. 
than the Poland leather and you know hardware possibly better quality even though it's more classically designed similar to the designer examples rather than with these inconvenient push buttons and straps that are slightly too thin because they're more form over function. So I would say that Coach and Michael Kors are more function as well as classic form if not artistic. I've had some examples of like the higher end Michael Kors in the past before I discovered Paulen and Coach as well. I would also say that both of those brands have classic and trendy. They have this range of products that's very classic and this range that's very trendy. Whereas Poland is just, it is what it is. It's kind of artistic and impractical. Now, when you go the step up to the designer level, like with the Mulberry or the Dior, this leather, especially the Dior, is noticeably softer and seems to be more fine, texturally fine. I think it's a 2011 version of this bag. Is that vintage yet? No, I hope not. You can tell that the leather and the quality is very high, even though it is kind of beat up and pre-loved. Not by me, I've never worn this. And in fact, I'd be kind of embarrassed to wear this out because what if people thought I bought this with my own money? Like, I'm not a designer girl. I don't really want to have the Dior label. But the thing is, I've looked at consigning this and the payout would be like $200 or between two and $300. And to go through the trouble of sending it in, possibly not even getting that because they don't guarantee your estimate. And also it was kind of a gift from my mom from a hand-me-down from her friend. So I don't think she would feel that great to know that I had just decluttered it for $200. And then even on a lower level designer like Mulberry, this leather feels very soft and luxurious. I'm not a luxury expert and I don't know anything about fabrics, leather, stitching, anything like that. So please take all this with a grain of salt. No feet on this one either. This is just like a squishy satchel bag, which shares my name. Or I guess it's really Alexa Chung's name, not me. But hey, there are some scuffs on the hardware of this as well. So, I mean, even designer brands are not going to be completely foolproof from signs of wear and tear if you actually wear and use your bags. The other area that Polen does not fulfill is brightly colored bags, which is why I got this one from Telfar because cobalt blue is one of my wardrobe colors and Polen doesn't make anything nearly this bright. I do kind of regret this because the leather quality is not real leather, is pretty bad. Like it feels plasticky and you know, the crease, it's, I know it's supposed to be like a grocery bag, but like that's the shape of it without anything in it. And these straps are not removable or adjustable. So that's where it's gonna hang. I really just got it for the color. I guess the other thing to mention is that the logos are not super obtrusive on the Polens. I'm not like a monogrammed logo kind of person. And then finally, the other category that Polen does not fulfill is obviously the sporty category where I have these Bagu and Uniqlo kind of nylon bags. And I have the Konkin backpack and the bright magenta Bagu that I gave to my kids already because I already decided I wasn't gonna use it. So that's basically my whole purse collection. I have one more clutch down here. I got it secondhand. I don't even know if it has a brand. It's just a single envelope pocket. So now you've seen all of my purses to be fully transparent here. I mean, clearly I have enough bags. If there are other questions you have about these particular bags, let me know, I might make a short video about it because I'm not gonna devote another video to more stuff. I'm toying with the idea of doing a jewelry declutter and possibly a books declutter, but other than that, that might be all the categories of stuff that I have to share with you. I don't know, so let me know if you're either very strongly in favor or very violently opposed to me doing a jewelry and or book declutter, collection recap, whatever it might be. I've accepted that stuff is kind of the problem that I'm trying to overcome here. And by focusing on it so much, especially in a public way, it kind of goes against the values of my channel in an ultimate sense. All in all, because of the lack of practical value, I would hesitate to recommend that you make this your one bag unless you truly love the form over function of one of these designs. And again, I would recommend you choose the one that speaks to you the most. And if you have specific questions or want to see close-ups of any aspects of these, I am happy to help you because I already have the stuff and I paid for it with my own money. So I'm happy to make short content to aid you in this matter if you want to comment and ask additional questions. For regular viewers of my no-buy content, 
Sorry if this has bothered you. If you have specific complaints, let me know in the comments because it does open my mind. It does help me see the areas of possible problems or hypocrisy or how to improve, make the ratio of my content better going forward, make the future plans better. You know, all of it helps me and I do take it seriously. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking now. <laughs> Let's get back to something more meaningful and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.